It's about time we had a CD update. Hi, hi, everybody, and welcome to my CD update. I am recording this on the 2nd of October 2023. When you'll see it is another matter, but just to give you some context of how long it's been since my last one. Uh, my to listen to pile of CDs is completely empty, so it seems like a good time to do an update. Um, let's just get cracking. Where shall I start? Let's start with this box set. So I got this up for my birthday back in March. Uh, this is the Blondie against. The Odds 1974 to 1982 box set. I have shown this. Uh, I think I did a proper unboxing. If not, I certainly showed it in detail on my birthday haul video. Um, but this contains all the albums from the original stage of their career. Plus loads of bonus material as well. Put in a really nice book with lots of detail in it. Uh, I sort of read the bits in the book about the tracks. I didn't read the biography type bits in between. But really good box set. You know, Blondie, I would class them as a singles band more than an album's band. Um, but they've sort of got enough interesting album tracks that it's worth listening to their albums. Um, bonus material largely good quality you know worth listening to as well early demos of lots of the tracks non-album tracks you know b-sides non-album singles soundtrack tracks things like that as well added to it yeah by and large very enjoyable box set okay i'll go through the bits where i've got multiple copies of the same album first um so the lottery winners we did a big video showing the 23 different versions of this album that I bought. I have listened to every single version of this album apart from the cassettes. Um, it is a great album. I absolutely adore it. Um, I haven't tired of it despite listening to it, at, well, 23, probably over 30 times already this year. Um, this is Anxiety Replacement Therapy by the Lottery Winners. Yeah, it's... They're just... Tom, the lead singer, is just a great melody writer. He, you know, catchy pop songs are his. Uh, so I'll come back to that one. Uh, his sort of forte. It's a couple of sort of unusual ones that I want to need to talk a bit more about. Um, but the idea behind this album is sort of how making music can help deal with anxiety and mental health issues so there's tracks about his therapist on here about um sertraline his medication a letter to yourself about writing to your younger younger self and saying everything's going to be all right worry you know burning house long way down let me down you're not alone which is about you know the fact there's no such thing as normal everybody's different yeah some really good stuff on here uh this these versions so this is the albert hall live version so this has got eight yeah eight older tracks recorded live at manchester's albert hall plus the album uh this is the acoustic replacement therapy so this has got acoustic versions of all the tracks as well as the main album. Uh, this is the Manchester Apollo edition. This is, was just commemorating their sold out gig at Manchester Apollo. It's just a standard album. Uh, this is Therapy Sessions EP. So these are various demos and alternate versions of tracks from their career. But yeah, really great album. Uh, Sophie ellis Bexter's new album, Hannah. So this is a standard signed version and then I ordered a personalised signed version from Banquet Records. Uh, good album, it sort of forms a trilogy with Wonderlust and Familia. So Wonderlust was sort of Eastern European theme, Familia was sort of Spanishy type vibe. This is loosely 
inspired by her trip to Japan, hence the fake Obi slip and the Japanese characters. Um, it's not overly Japanese sounding. There's lyrical mentions and stuff like that. It's definitely grown on me since first listen. I've heard it five times now, I think, across two CDs and three vinyl versions. Um, probably on a par with Familiar, but not as good as Wanderlust, which is one of my ten favourite albums of all time. Uh, Shane and Stevens' new album, Reset, across three different versions, alternate covers, CD digipack, um, all with signed cards in as well, which I've shown in my autograph update, but I'm not sure which way round I'm posting those, but you will see them in there anyway. Uh, good albums, more of his sort of country rock that he started doing. I mean, he's always done country rock throughout his career, but he's a less poppy and almost entirely country rock. But his last couple of albums have been in that vein, and this carries on. And yeah, very good it is too. Kylie's new album, Tension. So the standard CD um, I wasn't going to get, but then I managed to get signed version Oops. through HMV. So I thought, yep, yeah, I'll have that. And this is the deluxe version through her website with three extra tracks on it. Uh, it's a good album. It's not up there with her best, but it's not far from her worst. It's just good, solid, modern pop songs. You know, very much the mod the current sound. But there's some, you know, two or three tracks that I really liked on there. Obviously, Padam Padam's been a big hit. Um, Tension's Good, which is a current single. You Still Get Me High, I really liked. Hands, I really liked. 10 out of 10, I really liked. The others were all, you know, perfectly good. And the bonus, the three extra tracks on there are all fine. Okay. Uh, ordered this box set through, is it Cherry Red? Yeah. Through Cherry Red Records. This is Beverly Craven Memories, a complete epic recordings, 1990 to 1999. Um, I like Beverly Craven. Promise Me is one of my favourite songs ever. I have her debut album on CD that I picked up in a charity shop. But this came with a signed card, which again I've shown in my autograph update. Nice comprehensive booklet. sort of telling her, her story um so yeah it's got her debut album complete with b-sides and uh, west coast versions of three of the tracks then as her second album love scenes with b-sides added some of which are live tracks and then mixed emotions um with live tracks from 1991 and 1992 on there as well yeah enjoy that a lot uh let me cover boobs. Uh, this is Janelle Monet's new album, uh, The Age of Pleasure. It's a different sl sleeve on the, vinyl, on the CD to the vinyl. Um, it has swimming topless underneath features, uh, underwater rather, including on the CD, so I'll cover that as well, just in case. A uh, good album. It sort of flows as one continuous piece of music. Not very long. I think it's just over half an hour for the whole thing. There's no real, ca you know, great standout songs, but it just flows nicely and is a nice, fun, enjoyable listen. Uh, new McFly album, Power to Play. This also came with a signed card. Um, well there's a bundle of signed card and the album and this and what have you which again is going on my autograph update uh, another good album from McFly they're sort of trying to reclaim rock music basically um, and they do it pretty successfully this was a charity shop pickup this was a take that album I was missing this is um, III 3 whatever you want to call it you know it's Roman numerals III when they went down to a three piece um, to be honest I don't really remember l even listening to this album I know I have because of where it, it was in the I've listened to it pile but it hasn't 
sort of stuck with me. You know, I, I, the singles from it uh, these days. Love Life, I think, was one. Get Ready For It, I think, was one. You know, there were definitely three or four tracks that I knew as singles. But can't tell you much about the album because I don't really remember it. Uh, this was another pre-order. This was from Demon Records, I think. Who released it, but I, I ordered it through Amazon, I remember now. Um, this is the complete Fun Boy 3. So I really like Fun Boy 3. Um, I have uh, Best Of on vinyl that was released for Record Store Day. But thought I'd pick this up. Um, so this is a 5 CD and 1 DVD set. In a nice book. Packaging with detailed sleeve notes. Nicely packaged. Um, so this one is the debut album, self-titled. This two is Waiting, the second album. CD3 is Singles and B-Sides. And demos and outtakes. CD4 is versions, which are sort of remixes, plus BBC session. CD5 is live in Hitch in 1983. And then the DVDs there, promo videos, Top of the Pops performances, a couple of performances on BBC Something Else, whatever that was. And then the Old Grey Whistle Test broadcast of the Live in Hitch in gig. I haven't watched the DVD yet, but all the CDs are really good. This I picked up on eBay. I've been keeping an eye out for a Salt and Pepper Best Of on vinyl. Um, but when I actually looked at the track listing, what I wanted wasn't on it. It predated a couple of the tracks that I wanted to have. Um, so I went on eBay, picked this up from Music Magpie for like a quid or something. Uh, case came in damaged, but that doesn't bother me. CD played fine. Um... It's just sort of my era of rap music and there's, you know, a handful of tracks that I really like. Push It, What A Man, uh, Let's Talk About Sex, Shoop, None Of Your Business, which was the track I really wanted. Um, their cover of Twist and Shout. So, yeah, what for a pound, I'll have that. Uh, PJ Harvey's new album, I Inside The Old Year Dying. Uh... Not quite sure how I feel about this yet. I don't think I've listened to the vinyl yet. Um, so I think I've got a, a second listening to come. But it's at the moment, it's sort of towards the bottom of her catalogue. It's all a bit samey. Nothing outstanding. Nothing particularly catchy. You know, normally on her albums, there's at least. Although her style may change throughout her career, there's at least one or two, you know, catchy tracks on there, and there's not really on this. But with repeated listens, it might grow on me. Uh, this is Rita Ora's new album, uh, You and I. This is the deluxe version, bought through her website. This came with a signed card, which again I showed in my autograph update, but might not be genuine. There's a lot of controversy about it. I like Rita Ora. Um, this has sort of got all the lyrics page by page with photos, etc. Nice little package. Um, lots of tracks, but quite a short album. It's only about 40 minutes, I think. But So it doesn't outstay its welcome like some modern pop albums do. But yeah, quite, quite a few decent tracks on there if you like that sort of thing, which I do. This is the 20th anniversary reissue of Danny Minogue's Neon Nights. Um, I have the 15th anniversary release, I think, of it as well. Plus the original release. Um, this has been done slightly different. This is an official bootleg edition they've released it as. And it is a complete redoing of the album. Uh, slightly resequenced, I believe. But it's got different mixes, you know, remixes that came out have, been, have replaced the original on there radio versions it's just yeah done so it is a different album just comprising the same songs if that makes sense um which is inter was interesting i mean it's got a dvd on here with all the official videos and uh top of the pops performances and cbbc junior great north run party hits medley 
Again, I've not watched the DVD yet. Uh, Ellie Goulding's new album, Higher Than Heaven. Uh, this is the deluxe edition with five bonus tracks, all in recyclable packaging, etc. Um, yeah, it's a, a standard Ellie Goulding album. I like Ellie Goulding. I like her albums. They don't wow me, but they like I like them enough that I want to collect them. Um, perfectly decent Ellie Goulding album. It's Pretender's new album, Relentless. Um, we're at the stage where they're just called Pretenders albums because they sell better as Pretenders as they do as Chrissy Hind solo albums. Chrissy Hind is the only original Pretender on this album. At least on the last album, Martin Chambers drummed on some tracks. He doesn't feature on this at all. Um, that said, it's okay. Um, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. So her co-writer and guitarist is oh where are you? I know your name. It's annoying. James Wellborn, Wallborn, um, who's also in another band whose name has gone completely out of my head. But who, when I saw Pretenders live a few years back, they supported them, and then he played guitar for the Pretenders as well. So sort of did a double shift. He's very talented. Um, it suffers a bit from uh, poor sequencing. It starts well, two or three good, fun, catchy tracks, and it ends with a couple of decent tracks, but it all gets a bit samey in the middle. But there's some really good, funny lyrics on here as well. It's it's decent enough. I think it will grow on me. But on first listen, I was I was whelmed. I wasn't underwhelmed. I wasn't overwhelmed. I was just whelmed. Uh, I picked up a couple of Bond soundtrack CDs from La La Land. Uh, I can't remember which one of them they were down to their last 50 copies of so I nabbed one and then I ordered the other one at the same time can't remember which way around it was um, but this is the extended version of the world is not enough I have the original soundtrack release um, but as with a lot of soundtrack releases that was sort of rushed out and was incomplete or sometimes they sort of edit it, edit tracks down to make it more of an album than just the music from a film uh, this has got the complete score from a film, every track in full. And then, as bonus materials, it's got any of those edited versions, plus some demos and various other bits as well. Very good it is too. Um, both of these are music by David Arnold, Mrs. Die Another Day. So the same applies there, except I don't have the original on this. Um... So I'm just thinking, no, it's not. Neither of them feature the original. So this hasn't got um, Garbage's World Is Not Enough and this hasn't got Madonna's Die Another Day. It has got, because World Is Not Enough was written by David Arnold with Don Black um, and it has got his demo version of it on here and it has got Scott Walker's Only Myself to Blame on here. But this hasn't got any, there was no other song other than the Madonna one so that doesn't feature on here. Uh, so yeah, again, this has got the complete score and then the additional music is the film versions of them um, and the soundtrack versions, etc. Uh, Blur's new album, A Ballad of Darren. I've listened to this three times now and every time I hear it, I like it more and more. I liked it straight away, but it just has grown and grown on me from sounding like a good Damon Albarn solo album to a good Blur album. Um, yeah, some really good stuff on there. Katie Mellywa's new album, Love and Money. This is a deluxe version with a signed card and a booklet with lyrics and pictures, etc. I do like Katie Mellywa a lot. I love her voice. I like her songwriting. Another good album. Nothing outstanding, but Hugely enjoyable. Uh, Olivia Rodrigo's new album, Guts. Uh, so I, I enjoyed Sour. Uh, it had its faults, but I enjoyed Sour. Uh, ordered this signed version with signed card. It's 
probably a slight improvement on Sour. Um, does have one of the major issues still, though. You know, there's too many slower songs on this. You know, when she's up and punky and poppy and all that sort of stuff, it, she's really, really good. But when she gets ballady, she's sort of the same as everybody else. Uh, the 25th anniversary? No. 21st anniversary. Anyway, the, anim the new reissue of Supergrass's Life on Other Planets. Um, so they've been doing these sequen sequentially for all the albums. Even though I have uh, the big Supergrass box set with all the albums on picture disc and then loads of CDs full of bonus material, I still keep managing to find additional bonus material that isn't in that box set. So I'm having to buy these as well. Um, so this is a free CD set with the original album remastered I believe and then a disc of extras which is demos, b-sides etc and then a live disc compilation across various recordings but yeah lots on there that's not in the box set and a really strong album it's one of those albums again every time I listen to it I appreciate it more and more uh, from Demon I believe. No, Cherry Red. Uh, bad news. Every mistake imaginable. The complete frilly pink years, 1987 to 1988. So bad news of a spoof heavy metal band created by the comic strip team. Um, there was two. There was bad news and more bad news. Were two spoof documentaries or rockumentaries done for the comic strip TV series. Um, they actually predate Spinal Tap. And I know the years don't work there, but the actual TV shows predated Spinal Tap. Um, now Rick Mayle, Nigel Planer, Adrian Edmondson and Peter Richardson. So I have a lot of the material on this already from an earlier reissue of the Bad News album, which is CD1 on here. Because uh, that had a load of bonus tracks as well. But this contains both our albums, so bad news. Uh, did I say... I can't remember if I said... I might have said three CDs, but it's nice two CDs. Um, so yeah, CD1 is the bad news album. Interestingly, they've sort of retitled the tracks on here from the version I've got. I don't know if this reverts to the original release. But there's lots of... It's sort of a, a song and then loads of studio banter and stuff like that or live banter and then the song and they're sort of split into separate tracks on my previous release whereas they're combined on here um and then bonus tracks which is their christmas single and some covers and various other bits that album is produced by brian may who does feature on life with brian i believe and then cd2 is bootleg which is mainly just them talking there's a few musical tracks on there as well but it's mainly them talking but yeah a lot of fun uh this is the new reissue 50th anniversary reissue of ziggy stardust and the spiders from mars from motion picture um so this has got the blu-ray of the film which i haven't watched yet i've seen the film before i've got it on dvd um and then two cds with a complete show for the first time including the stuff that with Jeff Beck that wasn't on the original release. Willow's just come in. How are you doing, Will? That's that, but yeah, very good. Uh, I've got that on vinyl as well, which I haven't listened to yet. Uh, this is an interesting release. So this is Make Hay Not War, Catatonia, the Blanco y Negro Years. So this is a box set of Catatonia's albums, basically. Uh, however, there's a couple of issues with it which I didn't realise when I ordered it. Uh, reasonable enough booklet. Not great detail, but lots of pictures. And a little discography at the back. First thing I noticed was there was a... It's talking on here. Uh, let me find it. Uh... Uh, 
Um, so basically, the success of uh, International Velvet, the second album, led to Kevis Matthews guesting on the ballad of Tom Jones, which in turn led to a duetting with the song's titular hero on Baby It's Cold Outside. Uh, although the ballad of Tom Jones is not included in this box set, a version of Baby It's Cold Outside can be heard on disc five. No, it can't. Um, that's the first thing I noticed. And then, so we have the albums with bonus tracks. We get to Equally Curse and Blessed. And it's missing the track Karaoke Queen, which was a, a single, you know, it was a, a big track for them. Well, you know, it was a single anyway. Um, it has been omitted from the album at the band's request. So, even the, just the albums themselves are incomplete. Uh, Paper, scissors, stone. And then bonus tracks, which are a mixture of things. There's some early demos, um, tracks that were on early EPs, although not their earliest EPs because they were on a different label, so they're not on here. Um, most of the demos are from the last album, a couple of live tracks, karaoke versions, but the hidden track from the second album is on here. Um, but there's quite a lot sort of missing. It doesn't, you know, all right, it doesn't say it's the complete recordings or anything like that. I feel it should have mentioned somewhere when you ordered it that Karaoke Queen had been removed for whatever reason. But there are two CD releases of all the albums. Uh, which I don't own. I never got. They've been on my wish list ever since I came out, and I never got around to buying them. But have a second disc of bonus tracks, and they contain a hell of a lot more than these in here. So it's a bit of a letdown, really. You know, it's it could have been better. So what I would say is, if you want all Catatonia's albums on CD, you'd be better off buying the two CD versions rather than that box set. Uh, this is Far From Saints' debut album, self-titled. So this is a side project of Kelly Jones from the Stereophonics. Um, I ordered it because I have all the Stereophonics records. I really like the first two or three, and the rest of them were okay. So I thought I'd give this a go. I like his voice. Um, it's all right. Didn't wow me. Found it a bit bland, to be honest. It sort of all washed over me. Uh, I won't be getting any more Far From Saints albums if there are any, but it's okay. This is the um, 20th anniversary... No, it's going to be more than 20, isn't it? No, it's 20th anniversary release of Sound of the Underground, Girls Aloud debut album. Uh, this is the free CD set. I also had it on... or have it on vinyl. Two different vinyl, green and picture disc. Uh, so disc one is the album, disc two is various b-sides, tracks from around that time that weren't on the album, remixes, and uh, sound three is a load of remixes of the singles and a couple of the album tracks. Pretty much everything on here I had in various different releases, but nice to have all in one place. And then finally... This is the Brilliant Live Adventures box set by Bowie. Um, so these are a, a series of albums released exclusively through his website. 2021, I think it might even have been. Um, and they're all basically... You know how there's all these official, unofficial live recording CDs that you can buy in places like HMV and on Amazon now? But are really bootlegs, but because there's loopholes in the law around broadcast material, they can be released legally or semi-legally. Um, this is basically done to combat that. So these were all albums and uh, gigs that were broadcast in some way uh, from between 1995 and 1999 that have been given official releases to. So I bought these on... CD and you can't quite see can you no it's just up there um and on vinyl so you buy them separately 
but you could also buy the slip cases to put them in and they weren't the slip case wasn't ridiculously expensive so i did that for both make them nice box sets um so we have ouvre la chienne which is in dallas in 95 uh no trendy rechauffe from birmingham in 95 liveandwell.com which is a compilation of tracks from that were released originally on his website in 1997 or the gigs were in 97 anyway uh look at the moon live at phoenix festival 97 something in the air live in paris in 99 and live at the kit kat club in new york 1999 so Depending on your view of this era of Bowie, it depends how much you will enjoy these. Um, I enjoy them very much, basically. They're all very well done. The sound mix on one of them might be... It's one of the first two, I think. It's, I think it might be the um, Birmingham one. But if not, it's this one. Uh, Gail Ann Dorsey's very, vocals are very low in the mix, but otherwise it all sounded good. But that's it. That is all the CDs that I've listened to since the last CD update. Um, as I say, I've got none at the moment in my to listen to pile. That will change. I've definitely got some coming this month that I've pre-ordered. And I expect I'll pick some up as well. But thank you for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in another video. Thanks.